Hi, I'm Steve Shelburne, owner and operator of Shelburne RV here in beautiful Cleveland, Tennessee. <laughs> Well, good morning. We're back here on a Monday morning. You know, something that's been kind of curious this year is typically in March, my business really cracks open because everybody's getting ready for springtime and people are going camping and doing their thing. And this year, we really didn't have that. And typically by the time school starts, everything's pretty much slowing down because everybody's trying to get back in the rhythm of school and and uh, you know, just that's just kind of how it's always kind of normally been. This year, in the last two weeks, which is kind of abnormal for us, because again, we're kind of slowing down this time of year. Man, look at all the campers that have come in for repair. I mean, it's just kind of kind of odd that that's the way it's been this year. I don't know. This whole year's been different than what it's been in the past few years. Not quite understanding why or why it does what it does but it's been off so the boys are rolling in this morning um i ha i was actually up here this weekend working i had a uh i had a guy that dropped off a basement air on saturday kind of an emergency thing i had already worked on it about four months ago um so i was trying to be a little a little helpful on that come to find out it had a bad outdoor fan motor which we hadn't messed with the only thing we'd done on the unit just replaced the uh the control board and then i had another one dropped off last week that uh, was out of an alpha sia and it actually had a bad control board so i was up here uh sunday the boys were doing a few things around the shop here and i needed to mow i was trying to mow all my ditches up and uh so i had some time to while i was waiting on them i just kind of knocked both of those out but I had another one up here that uh, we had worked on that came back and it, we had put a compressor and a control board in it. Outdoor fan motor was locked up on it too. So kind of crazy, all the fan motors that we've had. I think we had three bad fan motors in basement airs in the last, the last week and a half. So kind of wild. So they've got some stuff going up here. We're gonna go up here and uh, take a look at what they got so let's let's go see what they got several videos back i had this wind sport in here that has the hwh uh hydraulic jack system in here with the slide problems you saw where all the mice had got in there had issues well we've got three bad hydraulic cylinders we put new springs they just are not retracting so we've got in here to change them but this thing is so rusty let me show you what we got going on so this thing is so rusted up that and there wasn't enough room up there for us we actually had a ranch on here and these things are so seized on here we could not get them out and we have tried and tried and tried over here on this other side so there ain't no coming out of here so we're actually going to end up having to pull two new hoses of this to resolve this all right so i'm behind on my videos i got to get going on this we have it's it's quite amazing that three weeks ago we literally were just like struggling for work um, and there just wasn't much coming in. And in the last, since basically right before school started, um, it's just been bonkers. It's been crazy. We've had so much stuff come in and we've had some emergency uh, uh, stuff that's come in. I've got a ri another river ranch that just came in today. Um, this one here was just at the factory last week and uh, it looks like we got an outdoor coil or outdoor fan motor that has stopped working on this. So Lewis and I are working at the moment to get that out. The little Roadrunner, it's back. Well, it never really left. So the refrigerator that was in that was the old little uh, small Dometic mechanical. It's got problems. And again, trying to find parts for some of that older stuff like that is been tough. Um, the lady that owns this, Wanted a six cubic foot refrigerator put in there. 
obviously a challenge to do that. So we'll go in here after a while. I'll show you what's going on with that. So we've determined that this is a bad, something going on with the outdoor fan motor. Now I've been at the factory. It's been all foamed up, sealed up. Uh, Lewis and I are just trying to get it unfoamed at the moment. Um, so that way we can get it out and see what's going on with that. So update here in a second. All right, basement air is out of the river ranch. And so customer with complaint was that when it ran, it was tripping the high pressure buttons. Now when, when uh, Lewis and I tested, the outdoor fan did not come on. So once we got this open, if you'll notice, there's the white neutral, there's the black, but where's the low? Where's the low fan? Well, there's the red wire hanging down right there. So we got to looking at that. Look how the end of it's burned out. So what was happening was when this unit was calling for high fan, this was running. As soon as it got close, it was cutting in the low fan. Of course, the power was down there. Fan wasn't running. Compressors were tripping out because the building building head pressure. Now, the one thing we got to watch out, and we're going to have to investigate here, when this thing was calling for power, was it sparking on anything? Has it damaged the coils? Has it gotten into the into the tubing somehow? So that's all stuff. Lewis is now pulling this out, and uh, there's a good possibility, we'll look at that here in a second, that the terminal on the end of that motor has been damaged because of it's been sparking right there. So we don't know if it was sparking here or sparking down there, but obviously that wire's got some problems. So Lewis is going to get this out, and we're going to investigate what's going on. So they've obviously been busy with some stuff, and guys, I've just it's been, like I said, it's been so busy. I mean, just picked up so much here in the last little bit. It's kind of odd. But I've got a few other things over here. Um, the one we worked on with the slides that now I'm having jack problems. HWH hydraulic cylinders were bad. We put springs on it. That didn't solve the problem. So let me show you what I got going on here with this. So these are the rear jacks. Now, the problem was the way it was up here in the frame, we could not get enough leverage on the hose to be able to get them broke loose. So we decided to take it loose from here and drop the whole assembly down. Well, then it broke all the bolts taking that loose. And then once we got it down where we could get a good wrench pull on those, it actually ended up breaking the hoses. So not only now did we put cylinders in it, springs on it, now we're gonna have to put new hoses from there to the pump. It's just what goes on with that sometimes. Uh, this one here is a 5500 that a customer had claimed he had issues with the head. Now, he brought us all the parts, uh, and he had a whole new head with all new valves, springs, guides, everything in there. We put it all back together, but that cylinder didn't have, it's got very, very little compression. So there was obviously more wrong with it before he uh, decided to buy the parts. So I don't know what we're gonna do there. I'm not really keen on getting into that motor problems. So we'll have to have a different conversation about that. This one here had an oddball hydraulic pump that they no longer make. And so we played around with different options. Well, we went to our friends at Equalizer and we actually was able to mount a pump up under here. And then we've got to run the new hoses down to here, but we're gonna actually use, let me take you over here and show you this Equalizer pump that we're gonna use. And the boys have made a nice bracket to mount this, but we're gonna use this equalizer pump uh, to do that. And that operates the gen slide. So get that to go in and out. This was the, the, the lowest cost option we could find because the other one they had has been gone forever. So it's just what it is, that's what we're doing. The little sunset trail that was in here had, had a gas pump, ripped the steps out, damaged all the bracketry right there. So we actually mounted a set of uh, uh, lippered steps that fold out and then we got all the new j wrap in and got all that rebuilt and the fender skirt all put on so that one there they just got finished up and it's ready to go on down its way well it's alive we got the slide out we got the new pump mounted down there we got to get uh 12 volt ground and 12 volt positive over there ran down to the pump but it is mounted and this slide is finally working. So a little bit of work to get that involved in that, but it is good. So we had a 6536 out of a Alpha come in that was throwing breakers. Customer thought it was probably compressor. What we found out was the outdoor fan 
was not being controlled by the control board. And it did have the original control board in it. So we went ahead and updated the control board. Now, when we, Lewis pulled the cover off, he tested the, the fan with a, uh, with a tester just to make sure everything was good. The fan ran perfect, so we knew it was in the control board. So we've updated the new control board. We've actually already ran it. Mr. Lewis is just getting it all washed out like he normally does. And then we're gonna put a, a sealed bearing on the uh, outdoor fan motor like we always do there. And then this one will be ready to be tested again. So one of the other projects we've been working on out here is a Winnebago Journey that's got uh, InvisiShield removal on here. And I wanna take you out here and kind of show you what's going on because this one here has been a little bit of a nightmare um, just because of how the shield has kind of failed, obviously, over a period of time. So let's take a look at this. So Winnebago Journey, you can see, now this one obviously had some paint damage, and that's not uncommon on some of the Winnebagos we see. You can see the front cap has had some clear coat that's failed. Um, but this one only had the Invisa Shield halfway down, and you can see how cracked and failed this is, and this thing has just been... I mean, sometimes you get a little bit of that, but a lot of times you get all these little sliver pieces that come off of here. So it's just been, it's been a nightmare trying to get all this, trying to get all this off here. A lot of work involved in doing that. But as you can see, look how nice it is once it comes off. Now, this one here, you can see it actually had something hit it right there and there's some spidering going on in the paint. But I think the customer was telling me he was gonna do a little bit of paint work on this anyways because of some of these issues he had there and obviously right here. But a lot of work involved in this one. Okay, let's take a look at this Roadrunner right here now. Remember, she had this little bitty tiny refrigerator that was about this tall and she wanted one a little bigger. So we've changed the cabinetry right here, cut that out, we'll have to build a little bit there, but not anything that Mr. Lewis can't handle. Lewis has been working on this little Roadrunner and we've got the refrigerator all finished up and ready to go. We gotta get the uh, Got to get the door put back on, but you can see he's gone in here and rebuilt every bit of this. Because again, this, refriger this refrigerator wasn't really designed for this camper because it was a lot larger than what was in here. But this is what the lady wanted. So very, very close to having this finished up. Well, the door is back in. As you can see, Mr. Lewis has got it all pretty much finished up. And you can see he's got all the cabinets done. Everything's back the way it was. And and again, that countertop originally was right there. So he had to do a lot of work to get a six cubic foot refrigerator in the place of where a three cubic foot actually was. So it's turned out very nice. We actually had the lady up here today and looked at it. She's very pleased with what we got. So we're gonna head this one out the door. Working on a 92 model Fleetwood Bounder. And customer complaint was that it was not the emergency start solenoid was not actuating. Now we went in here, started checking. We decided, we determined that this is our emergency start solenoid uh, based on house batteries and engine batteries. And so uh, when we activated the switch in here, nothing was nothing was happening right here. So this obviously is the plug that rolls to this, and it plugs up to that board right there. And so we actually took the uh, our uh, trusty power probe and actually used it to apply power to the solenoid, verified the solenoid was working, did verify that we had, uh, that we had uh, 12 volts from the plug, but we didn't have anything here. We couldn't show any voltage on the plug. Uh, we did check the fuse, which is this one right here. It was good, but we could apply power and the solenoid work operating the switch, we weren't getting any any clicking from the solenoid. So we undid the plug and started investigating and look what we found. That is the end of the terminal that is supposed to be, you can see that one's got it, that one's broke off. So you can see this is an Intellitech board from 92. This is probably the original, we know this is probably the original board. So the problem is gonna be, I, I don't know, Intellitech's been kind of difficult to find parts for. So at this point, uh, probably what we're gonna do, mark all these wires, pull all this off, obviously disconnect the power. I'm gonna go in here and desolder that plug, solder me in two wires with a jumper, 
uh, and get this back going because the chances of me find that, finding that old board are probably slim to none. So I could take the board out. I could send it off to my friends at Dinosaur Electronics and have them do that. Um, this guy's really kind of needing his camper back a little sooner than what it's gonna take me to get that done. So we're gonna give it a whirl. We're gonna pull that out, desolder that plug, do that, and hopefully that's gonna get him up and going. Worst case, I just had to send it out to Dinosaur. But we're gonna give it a whirl, try to save some time and get him done a little sooner than what he would normally be doing. Well, that's gonna finish us up here this week. Appreciate all the comments from last week on the thousand, uh, thousand subscribers. Appreciate y'all watching. You came back and watched another episode this week. Hope everybody has a great weekend. We'll be back next week to uh, finish up some of these projects we've started. Hope everybody has a great weekend. And remember that this video is what? Cousin Gary approved. Cousin Gary approved. Y'all take care. <laughs>